She lights up a room. She's free spirit. A family in shock and grieving after their daughter and sister is killed on her wedding night by a woman police say was driving drunk. Now Samantha Miller's family is working to raise awareness about the dangers of drunk driving in her memory. I'm Ann Jeanette Levy, and thanks for joining us here on Law and Crime. Samantha Miller was killed last Friday night, just hours after marrying the love of her life, Eric Hutchinson, in Folly Beach, South Carolina. Police say that the woman who hit and killed Miller was driving drunk. Here's a video of Eric and Sam celebrating at their reception. Around 10 p.m. that night, Sam and Eric were being driven back to their rental home in a street-legal golf cart when 25-year-old Jamie Lee Komorowski drove into them while speeding, according to police. Komorowski faces three felony counts of DUI causing serious bodily injury or death and one count of reckless homicide. An affidavit filed in support of those charges says Komorowski told officers she had one beer and one tequila drink in the hour prior, And on a scale of 1 to 10, she described her level of intoxication as an 8. The affidavit also said Komorowski refused a breathalyzer and would not take part in a field sobriety test. Samantha Miller's family has set up a GoFundMe page, and they are working to raise awareness about the dangers of drunk driving. Joining me is Lisa Miller. She is Samantha Miller's mother, and Mandy Jenkins. She is Samantha's older sister. Um, I'm so sorry for your loss, first of all, and that you're going through this. Um, What are you all doing right now? How are you feeling? Still numb, shock. Still haven't processed waiting to like wake up that it's not true. I think it's like a wave. You're, you kind of forget for a second and have a moment of peace. And then as soon as it hits you, you're just a mess again. So it's just kind of comes in waves. I think that's what we're all experiencing at this point. And honestly, I think with all the interviews and the just everything that's been going on. Um, we really haven't had time to just to just cry and get all these feelings out. Lisa, what do you want people to know about Samantha? Well, if you knew anybody that knew Samantha, Samantha was a person that knew no strangers. I just got a text from uh, a person that I don't know that Sam worked with for a couple of years at an orthopedic office back in the day. And she said, the minute Sam sat down, it was love at first sight. And that's what Sam does for everybody. And she said she didn't mind coming to work because Sam was going to be there. And even if you're having a bad bad day, Sam makes it better. She just exudes love, care for anybody that she comes around. Uh, When she was little, she would try to feed the homeless people until one of them rejected her. And then she never did that again. (laughs) But she's just really... She lights up a room. She's free spirit. Um, She's a go-getter. She's motivated. I think she's had three different careers and just keeps bettering herself and bettering herself and um, just always looking to be the best of what she can be for herself and for everybody else. Mandy, I'm sure that you have a lot of really good memories. I mean, siblings, you know (laughs) how siblings can be, but I'm sure that you know, you're, you're her big sister and I'm sure that this is just really a horrible shock. Absolutely. And I'm grateful that I was able to get to see my sister be an aunt because I have two daughters and they call her Auntie Sammy and it's gone now, but I got to see that. So just trying to hold on to it. Today's been a really hard day. I'm sure there are going to be a lot of really hard days ahead. Um, you know, that last Friday was supposed to be one of the happiest days in, in Sam's life. And obviously, you know, I just can't imagine it ending like this. Um, that had to just be excruciating. It was, that's kind of everything that... 
my family and anyone involved is holding on to is that it was the happiest day of Sammy's life. And she was like, I mean, she was like a movie star. I mean, you see the photos and everything, but not just in the pictures, but her soul and like her beauty and how happy she was at the event and the event itself, the wedding, like was from a movie. And we went from a really good movie to like the worst movie ever that night. I I just, it's unbelievable. I, it was shocking when I saw um, that this had happened. Um, Lisa, how is Eric doing? Every day, Eric gets a little bit better as far as physically goes. Um, he's got a long process healing physically, but emotionally, Eric, Eric was just like Sam. How I describe Sam, maybe he might be a little more conservative, but <laughs> her, his heart is just like Sam. Like he's such a feely guy. We used to, everybody kind of calls him crybaby, makes fun of him and stuff because, <laughs> because he feels so much. Like when they decided to get married, Sam was like, ah, oh, he's going to ball like a baby when he sees me. <laughs> you know, he, he's just such a loving guy and he just loves Sam with all his heart and he's heartbroken. You know, they had plans to next step buy a house because they were in the process of doing the wedding whenever you know their lease was up and they're like okay well we'll wait and we'll buy a house and then have a baby and i'll tell you a couple examples about sam um she was going to change her name to hutchinson which of course is fine but i thought she might do like hyphenated name um and i wasn't bent out of shape or anything but i just thought it'd be better if she kept miller since we're all miller's small hall except for her i'm married (laughs) But um, (laughs) anyway, we had talked about it, but it was no big deal. And then she told me a couple weeks ago when they said they decided they were going to have children after they got married. And she said, Mom, guess what? We decided if we had a baby, we were going to name him Miller. And I'm like, oh, you know, like she just loved so much and she wanted everybody to be happy. And yeah, she's amazing. Um. Just like the song that her and I danced to. I don't know if you know that story. I can tell you that one really quickly and then we can move on to John driving because that's really the issue. Um, but at the wedding, you know, they do the daddy daughter dance and she danced with she's two dads, an adopted dad and a biological dad. And she danced with both of them, split the song up for them, um, which is really sweet. And, and then the DJ said, surprise dance for Sam's most important person in Sam's life. And it was me. And so me and my daughter danced to Bruno Mars, Just the Way You Are, which was our song to each other. And even though the dancing was super awkward, so I really (laughs) don't want that video. (laughs) They both danced like a little (laughs) side. Yeah, it was was just awkward because I was shocked. I didn't know that was going to take place. And so at first we were like, do you do this one? Do you do, you know, like, um, but the happiest moment of my life too. Like my daughter honored me on her wedding day. It's all about her, you know, and both our smiles were just, everybody at that wedding was so happy. The energy. And when you had people from Utah, from where Eric came from, you had people from Charlotte, you had people from Folly and everybody was one group because everybody was there to celebrate Sam and Eric. And you would have thought that whole group of people knew each other for years, you know? Um, it was the energy and the love was amazing. I, I do want to talk to you now about, um, you know, she was killed by an alleged drunk driver. Uh, the police say that this this woman was drunk who hit their golf cart. Uh, this seems like now you've taken on a new mission in her in Sam's memory. Tell me what you'd like to do and what you're working to do. We've been thinking about it. I spoke to Eric yesterday and we definitely want to start something in her name to try to prevent this from happening. I don't think we've gotten to where what it will be looking like, but this should not happen to any family. We talked about this yesterday. They call it an accident. This is not an accident. That young lady knew that she was intoxicated because she even told the policeman what her level of intoxication was on a scale of one to 10. And it was an eight is her words quote. So if you're in an eight, you don't get into your vehicle. 
but she made a conscious decision to get into her vehicle and plow down my daughter in her wedding dress and kill her. So that's not an accident, number one. Uh, Mandy, you started the GoFundMe in your sister's memory, and you had a $10,000 goal, and now you've exceeded that. You've raised more than $41,000 at this point. What would you guys like to do with that money? And, um, you know, your mom talked about starting something in Sam's name. Would you like to use some of it for that? Of course. And honestly, I haven't even looked at it since I started it because that's who we are. Like, I was creating it as I spoke with my mom and my brother, and I was like, crap, like the funeral is going to cost a lot of money or there's what anything that we decide to do and we need to like have some support. All of us are so stubborn, <laughs> every one of us, um, mm-hmm. and never ask for help ever. And I think this is the first time my whole family is like, we have to be vulnerable and we're telling each other like, we have to be vulnerable to get some help for Sammy, for us, um, for Eric. Um, We don't have a specific plan for the GoFundMe as of right now. It was to to bring more awareness, to honor my sister. And it's all going to go to just that. And I, like I said, I have not looked at it. I, <laughs> yeah, we don't really, I mean, it's not that we don't care. It's, it's like hard to describe it. There's m- bigger, more important things, but what I am glad of, even with the, uh, the, the other GoFundMe that was made about the tragic accident, which definitely very tragic, but we wanted to do one that was focused more on Sam just because Sam's the one that's not coming back. Um, and Sam's, family and Eric, because he is our family as well, has been greatly impacted. And I can tell you this, anybody that's known Sam has been impacted by this. So it's not just my daughter that this young lady killed. It's she killed and broke everybody's heart that loves Sam and have known him. And I think Sam would be happy that at this point, people around the world are learning about Sam. And they're going to know who Sam Miller is. And that's an awesome thing for her. Well, Lisa and Mandy, thank you so much uh, for talking with us today. I really appreciate you joining us. Uh, I know this has been the worst experience of your lives, and we appreciate you talking with us about Sam and the, the very serious issue of drunk driving. Jamie Lee Komorowski is being held in the Charleston County Jail in South Carolina. Court records show in 2018 and 2019, she was fined for speeding 10 miles or less over the speed limit. And in 2018, she was found guilty of driving at an excessive speed that was reasonable for the conditions at the time. She's due back in court in August. For Law and Crime, I'm Anjanette Levy.